today I am going to make a video on something that I never really thought I would make but if the thoughts came to my mind it is for a reason. All of a sudden I had all these thoughts just hit me and I said I better write them down because I don't know how they will be useful but I feel like at the very least they will get streamed or put in a video. Basically, this is just me expressing the many ways that I feel the American worker just tolerates abuse. My reasoning behind sharing these thoughts is to see, of course, like always, if you guys agree, or if you guys just want to enlighten me or debate me, or you just think that these are crazy things and this does not happen in America, whatever it is that you feel like telling me, let's have the discussion in the comments. So the first thing that I can think of that the American worker does that to me reflects that we tolerate abuse is that we will take anything, any kind of job, even if the pay is very little and there are absolutely no benefits. And to me, the reason I call this tolerating abuse is because you might immediately say, well, Zam, if you're settling down for that job, that is your problem. But the reason I say this is alarming for me, it's because oftentimes jobs like that are meant to be occupied temporarily to resolve a situation that might have come up. But oftentimes I find that, that that's becoming a permanent job for a lot of people. Like something that is supposed to be temporary ends up being something that you maintain for the long term. Even if you stay there temporarily, it tends to have its setbacks because if you have worked in many places, chances are you're missing out on money. Some money that you never claim, some money that you even forget that you gathered, especially when it comes time to retire. Sometimes it is in your best interest to stay within a company as long as possible if you can predict that you'll be there for a while because some companies tend to give you some kind of benefit if you have so many hours. So if you keep being a nomad about jobs, then you're not really creating a strong presence anywhere to where you could possibly reap any of those benefits. In addition, even if the weather is bad, if the business is open, we risk our lives by showing up just to get the hours. The situation in many households is so bad that when there's inclement weather, even if it means that our lives could be in danger, making it to the job, we still try to show up because we don't want to miss out on those hours. I've been there. I've been there so many times. If I know that the store is open and I can go in a little later, or if I can get the same amount of hours that I could have at another time, I'm taking them because A, I don't want to use that time off my paid time off and also I just cannot be missing that amount of money in my next paycheck and this is one that I relate to it's almost daily now but well pretty much everything that I'm mentioning is something I relate to but even if we are sick as hell we will show up because our bills do not wait we skip the doctor just so that we can skip the doctor bill. Maybe our jobs are contributing to us getting sick, but at the same time, as someone who has never had a lot of money in her life, it's like I got used to my body just dealing with things on its own and I know that it's a terrible mistake because eventually my body is just going to break down to where there may not be turning back. And maybe what if something happens to where my financial situation becomes more stable and now I have to suffer the consequences of having postponed taking care of my health just so that I could make sure that bills were getting paid. But at the same time, if I'm not getting my bills paid, I cannot pay the bill of taking care of my health. Either way, it's a lose-lose situation. I am not skipping the doctor because I find great pleasure in it. I am not scared of the doctor. I am scared of the financial burden of seeing a doctor, especially the stupid ass premiums, co-payments, 
deductibles before your insurance actually starts kicking in and do what you think it's supposed to do, which is pay for things. I find it that every year, regardless of what kind of health coverage you have, that deductible is like rent prices. It keeps going up, 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 up endlessly. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to live relatively comfortably to where you're saving a few bucks? Or do you want to give it all to another organization before you even start getting treatment? There is so much that you have to pay. So that's the reason why I'm like, you know what? Just let the worst of the worst happen. And maybe me becoming another statistic may serve as the catalyst for change. Another thing is that we keep things up we keep things working at our jobs without challenging our leadership, our management, out of fear oftentimes of possibly being fired or any other repercussions. And I'm starting to find that the people who appear to be rebellious on the surface are secretly unsung heroes. And when I was in school, I used to think of people like that as just people who enjoyed being disruptive, troublemakers and whatnot. But now I have such an immense amount of respect for anybody in history who has ever stood up to the way things were that was making them unhappy. And in the end, a lot of people ended up benefiting from it and they did not get the credit that they deserve. So now thinking about it in contemporary terms, it's like, I can see how change happens now. And I'm glad that that is a thing, a trait that humans possess. We also get up really early and go to bed really late. And somehow we are okay with that. We don't demand change. If your hours start very early in the day, it can run until the middle of the day, the very end of the day. It can go on for so long and yet we don't really complain about it. I understand that there's some people who are designed to be laborious. There's people who can handle long hours of difficult work and I applaud that. However, in the grand scheme of things, you have to be sacrificing something to make that work. And I cannot believe that you are absolutely happy about that for the rest of your life. Some people sacrifice a social life. Some people sacrifice their marital life. Some people sacrifice their overall family time. I think that if you're having to sacrifice something so valuable, it's not a win-win situation. It is a win-lose situation. I just wonder why we tolerate that for so long. I'm very grateful that there's people who get stuff done no matter what. But at the same time, when some issue becomes prolonged, I think it needs to be addressed if it's beginning to affect your life. And while on that note, we allow for our family time to be disrupted and mask the issue as I got bills to pay and food to put on the table. Again, I admire people who are responsible. I was raised by a single mother, absolutely responsible. We always ate, we always had a roof over our heads, we always had a vehicle to transport us, we always had protection from the weather, clothes, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, we did experience a little bit of neglect because it had to happen. The neglect had to happen. It was absolutely involuntary. And uh, what can I say? It sucks. And I think that needs to be changed somehow. Like, unfortunately, I'm not in a position where I can offer solutions because I don't want to offer solutions that are fairy tale type of solutions. I like for solutions that can improve life for society as a whole. I have not really sat down to think about it, but I'm pretty sure that as resourceful as some places, countries, companies are, something can be done, as opposed to just taking away from the worker to make life more difficult. We find refuge in the convenience of buying what someone else grew, as opposed to growing our own food like our grandparents. 
Now I understand that during our grandparents' time, they actually did have an environment that could produce things for them, especially property. A lot of people these days, a lot of adults these days, are living in apartments and it tends to be a long-term thing. Nobody my age that I can think of unless they got it handed to them the way it's supposed to work. Nobody owns anything. So when you're at an apartment, unless you can grow something in a pot really well, you cannot really use that garden. That garden is not at your disposal. And even if it were, that soil quality, I'm pretty sure, would be terrible anyway to attempt to grow anything. So we have allowed to put ourselves in that situation to where we depend on going to some stranger's building to get the food God knows where that food is sourced from. Whereas my grandparents and my great grandparents and beyond, all they had to do was walk to their backyard. That's insane to me. And they could trust that food because they knew exactly what was happening to it. And on top of that, they could have turned that into a business. But also, you know how much money they saved yearly not having to buy groceries? except for like supplemental things. And last but not least, we allow ourselves to be bought out of our properties. Let's say that you have a property that has a considerable amount of land surrounding it. Someone may make you some kind of an offer and then you find it very tempting because the transaction immediately puts a couple of bucks in your pocket we don't think long term about what it means to sell something. Let's say that a huge company decided that they want to go around canvassing and just buying up property. It doesn't even have to be under a company name. It could be under the name of a powerful individual. Now we're selling our properties to someone who's going to do God knows what to our former property. And that let's say that they decide to use part of that land and expand that land if the surrounding area is available and they decide to build some kind of apartment complex but they end up turning that apartment complex into a luxury apartment complex that for the longest time it remains empty unsettled that's space livable space that's going to waste whereas in the past a family used to live there Imagine if you sold things to people who are just foreign to your community and they don't know what your community has been about. There are times in which small towns are known for something and all of a sudden some big company establishes a business there and the identity of that community is just lost. It's like selling that land to foreigners. What do foreigners know about what that piece of land means unless they have been familiarizing themselves enough with it. So I feel like some people who make the decision to sell something are not thinking in the long run about what it means to sell as opposed to what it means to hang on to something and turn it into a legacy, individual legacy. But for me, I would feel bad about selling to an entity that is going to turn that place into something that is just harmful. It's harmful for the environment and it doesn't really benefit a lot of people in the community because let me tell you there is so much empty space so much space that could be occupied by needy people who do not get that opportunity just because someone deliberately inflates the prices the cost of being in that place with no reason and the worst part about it is that it is my understanding that that type of thing is not really regulated is there a regulation on rent prices? Because if there were, the prices that we're seeing now are definitely not justifiable. So anyways, you guys, those are some of the thoughts that I had on this matter. I hope that you enjoy them. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree or severely disagree with some of these or just plain old disagree and why. And yeah, let's get this conversation rolling because I feel like it's something that should be expressed a little more often. Because I cannot believe just how normal this is. And I feel like this is not the right way to live. Alright guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you soon.